Hi, brothers and sisters. Brother Mike again. Hope you're all doing well. I just wanted to make a quick video today um, to address a certain claim or belief over free will versus um, not having a choice or not having free will. These, there are some people that tell us that man does not have free will, that man cannot make their choice or don't have the capacity to believe um, or to choose on their own. But I just wanted to highlight a few verses in the Bible that clearly point out, um, that clearly tell us rather that man does have free will and that man does have a choice to make. But before that, um, I wanted to address that predominant view that man, you know, is it's, it's essentially a Calvinist view that man is so depraved that he is unable to to believe the gospel on his own. You know, um, that is the T I believe in their in their tulip, um, the act the tulip acronym, um, total depravity. So man, well, what they say is that man is so depraved that on his own, he does not have the ability to choose, does not have the ability to believe the good news, the gospel of salvation and be saved. Now, <clears throat> the reason that that is a false teaching is for several reasons. For instance, if man does not have the ability to make choices or make decisions, then man cannot be held accountable for his sin. But the Bible tells us that the Lord will demand an account from all men on judgment on the day of judgment, judgment day. That all men are guilty under sin. Now, if man, according to Calvinists, was um, a pre-programmed robot who is unable to make choices, to, to make any informed decisions on their own and have essentially been engineered for failure, then man actually has an excuse on Judgment Day, you know, to accuse God and say, well, you know, you never gave me the ability to choose or to decide on my own. I couldn't even believe on you. Even if, even if I wanted to, you know, you prevented that belief um, by removing my free will, removing my ability to choose. Calvinist teachings give man an excuse on Judgment Day, whereas the Bible tells us that man is without excuse. Calvinist teachings. Um, cannot hold man accountable for their own sin, but the Bible tells us that man is accountable for his sin. <clears throat> and to go further with that, um, what the Calvinists also believe then, or what they have to believe, if that were the case, is that God would have to be the author and originator of sin and evil, you know, by engineering a creation that was destined to fall, destined to rebel, destined to fall into sin, and did not even have the capability on their own to believe the gospel of salvation. And then, to expand on that, why even bother, you know, issuing a command to go preach the gospel to all the ends of the earth, to every living creature, if all is predestined anyway, and apparently the people who aren't chosen, according to Calvinists, they're not going to believe anyway. And those who have been chosen, well, they weren't ever in danger of hellfire because they were chosen from the very beginning. I'm going to show you a few verses, um, and there are hundreds of these in the Bible, that tell us that man does have a choice. That man has to have a choice, otherwise they can't be held accountable for their sin. 1 John 5-9 If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. Already in that one verse, if we receive the witness of men, which tells, literally tells us that some people 
can choose to believe the witness of men, the lies of men, the doctrines of men, you know, that there are multiple paths to God or other ways to God or, you know, whatever else um, strikes your fancy. Um, but the witness of God is greater. And this is his witness. He that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God has not life. You see right there in verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in himself. See, the he there is telling us that it is on us to believe the witness that God has given to us. He, we, you, me are accountable to believe on the Son of God in order to be saved, in order to become a child of God. And he that believeth not God has made him a liar because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Now, just thinking about on that verse, he that believeth not God has made him a liar. Now, if you have a verse such as that, why would some people come to the conclusion that God predestined or makes some people believe not, therefore making him a liar? And then will go so far as to say, he that believeth not God has made him a liar, when in reality, he is the originator of that, dis of that unbelief, of that disbelief. It wouldn't make any sense. He that believeth not God has made him a liar, but according to Calvinists, it is God that makes these people not believe the testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Doesn't make any sense. Folks, man is accountable for his sin. Adam and Eve weren't robots placed in the garden, engineered to fail in the ultimate story of hypocrisy. You know, God gives all of, all, all of us a choice. You have a choice to believe the gospel or to reject the gospel. The gospel is preached to all men on the earth, to all living creatures on the earth. And because it is a choice that we need to make, we can be held accountable for our sins. All right? God does, does not say that he draws all men and, you know, in other verses, God will not say, or has not said, that He desires, His will is that all men would be saved and all men would come to repentance, if in, in actuality, secretly, He might be preventing some from coming to repentance. You know, that, that isn't biblical. You know, God does not contradict Himself. Okay? God desires that all men would be saved. Unfortunately, not all men choose to be saved. Not all men would believe the gospel in order to be saved. And I believe that is clear simply by looking at the vast majority of religions and denominations out there today. Okay, folks, salvation is simple. One believes the gospel. You hear the gospel. You believe the gospel, and you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. That's another thing I want to touch on quickly. I might do that in, in another video, but um, I'll touch it on it briefly here. Um, Calvinists believe that God must regenerate you first. You must be born again first in order to believe the gospel. But that verse in Ephesians tells us that you hear the gospel, you trust the gospel, you believe it. And then you are sealed, you are saved and regenerated. I'll make another video on that. Um, that's another topic altogether. The sequence of events um, in salvation. But anyway, 
Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today, and you shall be saved. This is not a religion. It is a choice okay, that all men have to make. Not making a choice. That's another verse in the Bible. He that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Okay? Not making a choice, remaining neutral. That person is already condemned, because he has never made the choice to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Okay? The Gospel is simple. God loved the world so much, that He gave His only begotten Son, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, God Himself, who manifested in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil. What is the works of the devil? Well, when mankind was tempted, disobeyed, sin and death entered the world, and as a consequence, all are guilty, all have sinned, all are guilty under the law, and all pay the wages of sin, which is death. That is the work of the devil, the separation of mankind from a holy God. But God, who loved us so much, would come down himself, would fulfill the holy law, the law that condemns us all as sinners, would be crucified in our place. He bore the wrath of God, took our sins upon his shoulders, and shed his precious blood for all of mankind, all who would believe on Jesus Christ alone as Savior, trusting in His finished work on that cross for salvation, are saved. He was buried, laid in a tomb, and on the third day was raised to life and glory. You believe that? You trust in Jesus Christ and His finished work? The nanosecond that you do, you are saved, sealed by His Holy Spirit, made one spirit with God, born a child of God, never to be plucked, never to be separated from the love of the Father, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay? Jesus is the Savior, and there is no other Savior, no other name that we are saved by, that we are given. There is only one way to be saved, and that is through Jesus Christ. There is only one way that we have peace with the Father, and that is through His shed blood, which He shed for all mankind. Mankind must choose to believe or be damned. God bless each and every one of you.